All right, welcome back. Today we are talking about the sequential push tool and the sequential track tool. Now you can see how these two uh, logos here for these tools are similar. The three lines, the push tool is straight lines and then the track tool is kind of wavy lines. And that's for a reason, because on the sequential uh, track tool, you can click multiple locations that you want the lines to move to and uh, on the push tool, you can only go in one direction. So let me show you how this works. I think it's worth making sure to show uh, the similarities between these two tools uh, because each one has a distinct uh, difference about them. So we've selected our lines and then we have the sequential push tool pulled up. Let's do an eight to five step size. And what I want to do is I want this middle person to kind of be the leader. So they'll move forward 16 steps and halt. And then the other people on either side of them will step off every two counts. So that's what we got kind of set up here. Step off every two steps, drop off every two. Okay. But what's nice about this tool is that you can hit mirror and it'll do the same thing with the other lines. So the other lines uh, will, will do a similar uh, look. So that looks good. Let's accept it. Let's see if it's what we're looking for. Step off. Every two, every two, every two, every two. And then you'll notice they keep the space, but they drop off from outside to the inside. I have been, however, able to do it using the sequential track tool. But, like I select my middle person, I come down, 16 counts, and the line stays a line, which is great. Drop off every, step off every two, so I'm gonna get the look I want. But if I do drop off every two, it says I don't have enough sequential counts. And then I don't get anything for the move. So the move doesn't even animate. So, Let's try that again with my sequential track tool. Select my leader, come down, step off every two. If I select drop off every one, it'll allow me to do it. But I'll show you what it looks like. It doesn't have the same look as my stagger tool did. You'll notice they step off. Things look great. But you can see as they come into the halt, it's curved and these outside people are taking bigger steps. So I'm not quite sure how to get the look that I'm looking for using the sequential push tool, the sequential stagger tool, what I thought in my head they were meant to be used for. I think if I wanted to get the look where these guys all stepped off and halted and then every other person on either side of them halted, I would do um, this look. I would select these guys I would flip the grouping order and I would just move them up 16 steps using the push tool. And then I would use my stagger tool, step off every two, duration 16 counts. Then I know I'm going to get the duration I want. 16 steps, I've got it set up perfect so that they, you know, halt and step off at the right spot. And then I would do that the other side as well. I would move these guys up, except I'd have to get my middle person again and paste them to these guys. So it seems a bit more time consuming. Step off every two, duration 16, except. And so now, but now I know I'm gonna get that look that I want. And then I would do that for all four lines. So I'm still trying to find a way to get that look using my sequential push tool. Now, the track tool is handy if you are looking to have multiple lines moving in different directions and you wanna do it all with one step. Let me give you a little disclaimer though before you use this. If I use the tool this way, the way that my performers are glued right now, it would kind of mess up. So you need to make sure that they're glued in the direction. Let me show you. So the sequential track tool is great and is different than the push tool because you can go in multiple directions. So you could have all these lines move forward 16, uh, select your leader, forward 16, and then to the left 16. OK, 
okay? Very similar to using the track tool over here, okay? Um, but it's a little bit different where you can, um, you can select the leader and you could do that same thing over 16, left 16, but then you could say mirror left and right. And so now you know every other line will move. But before I started with the tool, I mentioned to you that they have to be in the right order. The tool looks exactly how they're grouped. So if I did this, you're gonna see these guys jump around right, in, right at the beginning of the move. Look, whoop, okay? And that's because they're not necessarily uh, glued in the correct order. So in order to use this tool and for it to understand what way you want each line to move, you're going to need to glue in the right direction. So the first thing you need to do is go from the back to the front and then go through and knife them again so that they're all separate lines. So now my lines are in the correct order and I can use the sequential track tool. So that's a, a little pro tip there, something that could make you really frustrated if you're using the tool. Now we should get the look we're looking for where the lines move forward for 16 counts. As soon as they hit this hash, as soon as this front line hits the hash, they will all move in the opposite direction and you get that look to it. So a lot to play around with here with sequential push, sequential track. I, uh, I found um, you know, that the, they do a great job of trying to save what these tools you need to do with multiple steps. Um, these ones try to do a, a better job of getting it all done in one step, but you need to make sure that you, number one, have practice with them. Number two, you've got your uh, performers glued and pasted and the lines and the ranks of the files uh, you know, are all in the right order so that the tool knows who's going who's going to go where so play around with them and maybe start to mix them up into your own writing to see if um, you can make them into useful tools for you so i hope this was helpful to you uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like these pyware videos